Hello there, welcome to my YouTube cycling channel. Today I'm going to look at six things no one ever told you about DI2. Here in the UK, Cycling Weekly recently ran an article entitled Six Things No One Ever Told You About Shimano DI2. Essentially a warning about some of the pitfalls associated with electronic gears. I've been riding DI2 for over a year now, so let's have a look at these six points and see how they compare with my own experience. Number one, the bike might arrive with a flat battery. This can be particularly true if you've ordered a bike online, in which case you'll have to charge the battery before you can take it out on its maiden ride. A little bit annoying granted, but if the bike is mail order, then usually there's some basic bike setup stuff that needs to be done anyway, which will probably take at least an hour. More than enough time for the DI2 battery to charge. On the other hand, I bought my bike from a shop and all I can say is that my battery was fully charged and I was able to ride straight away. Two, cold weather can shorten battery life. I think the key word here is shorten. It doesn't necessarily mean the battery will run out of charge while out on a winter ride. Under normal circumstances, a DI2 battery will last weeks before you need to charge it up. If that is shortened to say a week, I would argue that's more than enough to go out and have a ride before coming back and charging it up in preparation for the next ride. To give you some idea of what effect let's say cooler temperatures have on a DI2 battery, I stopped riding my DI2 bike in November and didn't get it out of the garage until May. When I checked the battery, it was indicating that it still had a full charge. Three, it doesn't switch back to mechanical when the battery dies. This is a biggie. If the battery dies mid-ride, you will be stuck in one gear. End of. Having said that, it's never happened to me as I regularly check the battery level and charge it up regardless once a month. Do these two simple things and you should have no problems with power, summer or winter. Four, the buttons are close together and you might press the wrong one. Yes, I've done this myself a couple of times, but then I just changed back to the gear I wanted, no damage done. However, I can understand how this would be much different during a race situation and perhaps mean the difference between winning and losing. Five, the cable can jump out. All I can say is this has never once happened to me and the only time I've ever seen a cable disconnect itself from the rear derailleur was when one of my cycling chums had a crash. But then the accident also sheared the mech hanger, taking the derailleur with it. Six, it's so much better than mechanical you'll never want to go back. I've heard so many people say this, only for them to go back to riding their cable geared bike over the winter. Yes, DI2 is great, but to say that you'll never go back to a cable system is I think a bit over dramatic. I would even argue that most riders would struggle to see a massive difference between a well-maintained and tuned cable system and DI2. So there we go. If you have any questions, leave a comment. But in the meantime, thank you for watching and please check out some of my other how-to films.